talks about posh boys who don't know the price of milk William okay. Hague will be so he's out. our tribune of the working class uh, and, and the north um, yeah. and also the kind of statesman kind of, you know, David Cameron's oh, doing things well. in the long term yeah. interests of the country um, then you've got Grant Shapps as the kind of the, the enthusiastic Tory party cheerleader mm -hmm. and then you've got Michael Gove for when Downing Street just wants to shut a story down um, uh, he is chief whip, but quite unusually for chief whips, going to do a lot of media. You know, in the remember when Maria Miller was resigning, Michael Gove was on the way in the cab to the Today programme to defend Maria Miller, and then it turned out Maria Miller resigned before he got to the studio, so he did a, <laughs> and an he's interview. He's completely unruffled by yeah, the whole exactly. of that. Yeah, exactly. And, and he is, I think, one of the other things that they like about him is they think that Michael Gove, but because he's a kind of former hack himself and because he's so articulate um, and makes news, their theory is that, that you can basically, when you're in trouble, you can call the Today programme and says, We've just put Gove in a cab he'll be at broadcasting house in 20 minutes and the today program will clear the slot and on he'll go um, and, and then you have estimate Bay as, as the fourth minister for broadcasting who I think is designed to be the kind of slightly surprising um, uh, uh, you know the, the Liverpudlian woman um, who again defies the kind of idea that the Tories are all a bunch of posh boys right. um, but so, so, so we were told a day ago that estimate Bay would be the minister for television and that would be it from what you're saying, we've now got a minister for Radio One, Radio Two, Radio Four, and Radio Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think it's almost we're getting to kind of designated. Um, we don't have a Radio do Three we? minister <laughs> yet, do we? It's not I something... think Michael Gove and his love of Wagner could easily do the, the kind of minister for Radio Three. Um, but I, I think I think you see that kind of thing, and also um, you, know, you look at some of the other appointments. You know, Priti Patel has gone to the Treasury. Mm -hmm. One of the things that most appeals um, about Priti Patel to the Tory hierarchy is that they believe that you can use her equally effectively to attack both Labour and UKIP. So I think you'll see uh, her on the economy trying to do that. I mean, it was very interesting that when Cameron addressed the 22 the other week, he basically told them that it was the economy that was going to bring UKIP, people who'd gone to UKIP, back to the Tories. Um, I, I think we're going to see Priti Patel doing a lot of that kind of small business, you know, the tax cuts we have already given you, all that kind of stuff, I think, will come from her. Today does seem to be a shift away from government towards electioneering with a reshuffle pretty much designed for campaigning, would you say? Yeah, I think so. I think if you're looking for ministers who have particular policy expertise, it's quite difficult to find a lot of them who've, who've been appointed, but they're good at selling policies, they're good at defending policies that might be unpopular. So actually, they're, they're gearing up, as James says, for that broadcast tour. It's not going to be about kind of policy wonkery over the next few months. It's going to be about trying to beat Ed Miliband and doing it in the most effective, cutthroat way possible. But can we physically take 12 months of electioneering? I don't know. I think if you like talking about policy, probably not, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think one of the other things you see is, 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 is the, the centre is, is strengthened. If you, if you think about these, 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 these meetings that they have in Downing Street all the time, you're now going to have Osborne in them, Hague in them, Gove in them, Cameron in them. But Cam they, Cameron, in other words, he's got a higher quality comfort blanket. Yeah, and, and he, he's basically saying that we need political brains at the centre, people to kind of roam across government. You know, I think one of the things, though, which is potentially problematic is, what, is Michael Gove still going to be on all these cabinet committees? He's still going to be doing, he's going to have a lot more time to do right rounds. And one of the things that got on Theresa May's nerves was this sense that Michael Gove was was putting his nose into her department's oh, business. Yes. Now he's got a license to yeah, um, interfere. He, he has a he has a kind of prime ministerial license to to interfere, which which I think could lead to some quite interesting confrontations. Um, I think one of the other things about this is it, it's a complete change in the nature of the role of of chief whip, because yeah. um, the chief whip in kind of you know, you know well, when and Michael Dobbs books when the chief Andrew, whip was when the Andrew, backroom boy. When Andrew Mitchell was appointed, um, the last time Cameron did a kind of big reshuffle to the chief mm. whip job. Um, much was made of the fact that his nickname at school had been Frasher, and that you know the idea was you you wouldn't want to cross Andrew Mitchell. Well, Michael Gove is is, is 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 okay. He has a temper that you sometimes see, but he's incredibly polite normally. Yes, he wasn't a bully he kind of at school. Guilt trips people, doesn't he? Um, yeah. doing things rather than at school he was bullied. Actually, there was a group of kids who called themselves the Gove Busters who went around trying trying to beat him up. The poor guy. So he's the opposite to Andrew Mitchell. He's a a, a charmer rather than a thrasher. 
I suppose that the flip side to him being very good at defending the government when things have gone wrong on the Today programme or something like that is he also does, as you say, like to make forays into any policy area. And that's got in, into trouble in the past. And putting him in a, a more broadcast focused role is useful but also dangerous because you could see him intervening on the Second World War as well as the First World War. He loves to go off yeah. piste, doesn't yeah, he? he does. And tell you about the Battle of the Somme yes. and all hell can break loose. <laughs> I think the thing about Michael Lewis is he's probably... I think one of the other things about this is is that Cabinet is going to become a lot duller because of this reshuffle. Because if you look at lots of people who've gone, you know, Ken Clark always used to speak up and speak his mind about things. Um, Patterson always used to speak up and speak his mind about things. So I think that, you know, I think, I think there'll be all the more importance on the, the Gove interventions to kind of keep Cabinet lively and entertaining. <laughs>